I've done a few videos on Joseph Parker. Um, whenever I seem to mention his name in a video, the hits and the ratings in that video seem to be higher than uh, with any of the other boxers I speak about regularly. So he's someone I'm monitoring with a bit of interest. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, in brief, I think he's got a lot of potential. He's a really, really good fighter considering how young he is. Has been in with a fairly decent level of opposition and he's one I see for the future. I do, however, think that he's got a tendency not to use his advantages, such as jab and reach, get sucked into a war, and as a result can become quite hittable. Uh, we've seen Parker get cut in a fight, um, we've seen Parker get clipped quite a few times, namely in his last fight with Sermon Williams, someone who was throwing wild kind of windmill punches but able to land on Parker on numerous occasions. So my suggestion was that he stayed at a similar level. Uh, and I think I named opponents like Kevin Johnson and Fraser Quendo as people I'd like to see him in with. People who weren't going to get stopped, could give him rounds, could ask him questions, but realistically weren't going to get him beat at this point. Um, it's been reported on Boxing Scene that Parker's next fight will be December the 6th, and that he is in talks uh, with Vinny Madalone uh, about a fight for that date. Now, I guess, realistically, December the 6th is about six weeks away from where we are now. You wouldn't really be able to get a superstar opponent. I think, realistically, from my eyes, Madalone is a slightly disappointing opponent. Uh, I, I think that the Sermon Williams fight was very, very good learning fight and a very good experience for Parker. And I think he needs more of the same before stepping up to that top-tier level. Um... Vinny Madalone is someone who at times has been exposed by you know, classy heavyweights, bigger punchers, as someone you can take out. Um, I mean, for example, the likes of Tyson Fury, Evander Holyfield, Thomas Adamek, Dennis Boystov, John Mark Mormek. You know, when he steps up to any sort of competitive level, he seems to lose. and He's been knocked out a few times. It's doubtful that he'd be able to go the distance with someone of Parker's ability. Um... In terms of his offence, he's got a few knockouts on his record. I think he's 27, 28 knockouts out of his 37 victories, so he does catch a bit of a punt. But when I've seen him fight, notably against Tyson Fury, he was again quite wild, quite swinging, not very technical. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a step up for Parker. I possibly think it's a step down, which would be highlighted by the fact that in Vinnie Madelon, you're losing. You know, Vinnie Madelon lost to Brian Minto, who Parker's already beaten earlier on in his pro career. I do appreciate, whilst it is a slight step down in my eyes, and it's uh, an opponent who probably won't ask as many questions of Parker. Maybe that's a necessary evil given the date that they were working to. Um, I understand from the boxing scene report that lucrative offers were rejected by both Lucas Brown. And Fraser Quendo. I imagine both of those guys turned the fight down because they're looking to get to world titles without taking risky fights. I think Quendo seems very likely to get a fight against Ruslan Chigaev for the WBA regular in a rematch of their initial fight. That becomes much more likely with the recent news that Luis Ortiz has been suspended for uh, a suspected steroid abuse. Um, Lucas Brown, I believe, has a fight booked in against Chauncey Welliver uh, at some point coming up soon as well. So, uh, you know, from my perspective, I, I mentioned Fraser Quendo as someone I'd like to see Parker on with. I must say, I think it would be a terrible, terrible idea at this stage of his career to put Parker in with Lucas Brown. Um, Parker has typically been fighting smaller opponents, less rangy opponents, uh, and opponents who don't punts that hard for elite level heavyweights. Now, I think Parker needs three or four more learning fights where he goes 10, 12 rounds um, before he's put in with someone like Lucas Brown. Because at the minute, somebody like Sermon Williams is able to catch him with big right hands, big swinging punches. Um, he's been able to get away with it. He's managed to weather the storm. But Parker against Lucas Brown, you know, the way Lucas Brown punches, the way he's able to get rid of opponents... I think if Parker put in the same performance he put in against Williams, he'd get beaten by Lucas Brown. Um, I just think that fight's too early for him in his pro career as of yet. He, you don't want to get sucked into a war. You don't want to become hittable with Lucas Brown. 
and until Parker's shown for me the ability to box for 10 rounds, to be more clinical, to be more defensively minded, um, and to be more sort of, you know, fighting to his assets rather than getting sucked into a war, I would keep him away from someone like Lucas Brown. I think they had the right idea with Fraser Quendo. I imagine Vinnie Madelone is the best of what's available given the, the late notice. But yeah, seriously, I'd say have a think twice about Lucas. Uh, I'm interested to hear people's thoughts on Vinnie Madelone. How do you see the fight going? Uh, early prediction will be a Parker stoppage. You know, Madelone's been stopped by a number of boxers who are have gone on to be top 10, you know, or are already respected top 10 fighters. Uh, I think if Joseph Parker has got serious ambitions, he'll dispose of Vinnie Madelone. Um, and as I say, Parker's already beaten Brian Minto, who got rid of the guy. So, yeah, interesting. Um, interested to people's thoughts as always.